So um, when I came to the U.S., I actually um, went to college, went to the University of Virginia and oh, graduated wow. with an economics degree. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then decided to switch drastically and uh, decided to become a chef. So I went to the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale oh. and graduated as a chef. I actually started as a savory chef and I worked as a savory chef for many years and then specialized in pastries. So. Um, Culinarily, in education, it was here in the U.S., but then actually my main school was uh, the four years I spent in, in Italy, coming back and forth. I worked there for four years, okay. and that's really where I learned what I know about savory cuisine. And then for like travels and courses I've taken, that has also enriched my pastry um, knowledge. Sabrina, what are your plans short and long term? So short term, um, well, we, we're working on Nandi a lot right now, and we would love to be able to uh, open new, new stores and open more Nandis uh, here in Florida. Long term, we would love to open Nandis everywhere in the world. Yes. So that's something that, you know, I see Nandi in like Tokyo and Paris and everywhere else. So that's, but I know that that's long term. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really working on establishing a good brand and of course, first, excellent products, excellent quality products, great customer service. We're really working really, really strong on, on that. And you you have the knowledge, you have the tools and the amazing tools that you also represent. Uh, and you have that uh, willing of uh, providing yes. a great service in every way. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Great service, great food. Uh, it's something that should always be around and, and we want to be around for a really long time. And then um, as a chef, I would love to keep uh, spreading the knowledge like we talked, doing more demos, doing more consulting and learning more. I am, um, I, I, I think that if you think you know everything, you die the next day or the next second. Mm -hmm. um, the type of person that I'm truly a nerd. I love to study, I love to learn. I love to learn from other people, um, whether they're professionals or not. I think you can learn from everybody that surrounds you and everything that's around you as well. So learning more and getting more knowledge, better techniques, that's also something that for me as in short term and in long term, it's something that I want to I wanna keep evolving on. And uh, in the long term, I would love to be able to, to do consulting and teach in different parts of the world. That's something that I would love to do. Beautiful, thank you. Sabrina, who's your biggest influence? Uh, I think my biggest influence has always been my maternal grandmother. Mm -hmm. And she used to live with us. She lived with us for many years, actually. And she was not a chef, but she was probably better than a lot of chefs I've known so far. And I've known a lot of chefs. Where is she from? She's from Argentina. Okay. Uh, but her, she's all. She was also a cocktail like okay. me. Um, <laughs> Italian uh, mom, German dad, some French in the middle, and she just knew how to. Like I was saying before make the best representation of each dish that she used to make. She was very creative as well. She had really good techniques that she learned when she was little. Um, and she had an amazing palate. And she knew how to pick ingredients. She knew what to do with food, even though she never really studied it. Um, her main cooking was very European uh, mm -hmm. style. Yes. But she loved to eat everything okay. and she loved used to uh, love to taste everything which is something that I think it's so important for everybody. It's true, definitely. Because if you want to cook better, you have to taste everything. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, now you know you don't like it or you know that it's not how it should be. Exactly. But you have to taste because that just makes our palates more wide, more open, our knowledge, our food knowledge just increases by smelling things, tasting things. And she used to taste absolutely everything. And she used to encourage us, exactly. um, my brother and I, to taste absolutely everything. So um, I think that she, I grew up with that. And I strongly believe that without that growing up, I would not be what I am today.
And what's the favorite uh, dish that she used to prepare? Oh my God, um, so many, so many. I mean, when I was little, simple things for a kid, like uh, a chicken cutler and, mm -hmm. and mashed potatoes would be one of the things, but honestly, probably her um, Christmas dinners, uh -huh. which were actually very well put together, and that's something that has definitely passed on to me, and I'm the one that cooks now for Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything else, but she used to make this uh, chestnut puree, Ooh. and uh, the her turkey with the stuffing had chestnuts and walnuts and, and had pate. Oh, wow. Okay, it was very intricate and, and very complicated, but it, her flavors were just balanced, and I remember those smells. So every time that the holidays come around, my family is like, yo, you don't have to do that much. You don't have to complicate yourself. And I'm like, it's, there are all our 364 days of the year. Then Let me rest. complicate myself <laughs> right now because it's tradition, it's family. And I remember those dishes um, from when I was little and I want to pass that on for sure. Beautiful. Um, I'm very passionate about the subject of quality and cooking good food. And good food means uh, nutritious food means healthy food but it means food that tastes good that's that's ultimately our job as cooks as chefs is to cook something that people will enjoy mm -hmm. um, and they the main way I think uh, to cook good food is first of all respecting the ingredients you probably will never be able to make the best representation of a dish if you start with bad ingredients. Um, you can actually be a very good chef by just buying good ingredients, good quality ingredients. They don't need to be the prettiest ones uh, because there's a lot of waste, unfortunately, in, in our age. Uh, we waste food just because it doesn't look good. We just need to buy good quality ingredients and respect them. And when you respect the ingredients, you will probably end up with something really, really good. So um, whether it's a, a home cook or a professional chef, using good techniques that could be learned by anyone and using good ingredients is to me the key to cooking really good foods. Um, so you're trying to say that it doesn't have to look like gross or or too pretty or too big or too yeah that that's something to that tastes good exactly i mean think about this when you go to a party okay and you see the flowers and you see the, the how pretty the food looks and you hear the music say a wedding for example if that's something that i catered to me, as a chef, the most important thing is that I want you to remember how amazing the food tasted and what a great time you had. But when you go to a restaurant, you will for sure take a picture of your dish mm -hmm. and that picture will stay in your phone. But you're probably not gonna remember that picture because you take thousands of pictures every day, right? Yes. What you will remember is how good or bad that food tasted. That's true. And when you smell something, that reminds you of something your grandma used to do, or uh, you taste a dish that reminds you of what you used to eat when you were little. It's true. That's what's important. And unfortunately, with the social media, even though it's a fantastic tool for everybody, yes. there, there is a lot of emphasis nowadays on how food looks Definitely. and not necessarily on how food tastes. Definitely. And so obviously we eat with our eyes first, so mm -hmm. it has to look pretty, it mm -hmm. has to be beautiful, but ultimately we're eating it exactly and so it has to taste good who knows how many of these dishes that we see on social media look great but when you taste it it's just not memorable and to me the most important thing is to make memorable dishes things that you will remember because they were so good you just want to eat them again again and oh, well, like well I, I like to think that the first um, the first way of spreading my knowledge is here at my store uh, with my customers trying to teach them about new flavors and new products and new pastries that are not really common maybe here in Miami and then with my 
my the, my team in the kitchen. Uh, I try to teach them as much as I know, but then also teaching classes and doing consulting work. Um, I do consulting for anybody that needs uh, help with their existing stores or that would like to open new stores, whether it's a gelato shop or ice cream shop or pastry shop or um, any type of uh, restaurant uh, uh, industry in the, in the industry of the restaurant world. And you know, the I I love to teach and spread my knowledge to whoever is willing to. To absorb it and take it and it's open-minded so you can be a home uh, cook that are is just interested in learning new techniques and uh, or you know a professional chef that wants to become better or know how to make recipes uh, better for your own uh, your own place. Uh, having Nandi is a one of the biggest achievements obviously having my own store um, and being able to sell to awesome customers and cater because I used to cater uh, before when I was a savory chef mm -hmm. and I continue to do that today. Um, I'm also uh, a brand ambassador for Bravo which is a very important brand of uh, ice cream gelato machines. Uh, this is an Italian brand and they are incredibly important in gelato, in the gelato world but also in the pastry world mm -hmm. and they're really really important all over Europe and uh, as well as here in the US and I'm very honored to be one of their brand ambassadors that's fun and um, with them I get to to teach and to do demos uh, for the for people that are interested in their machines but also people that have already purchased the machines and need to learn more about pastries and they're opening uh, their own shops and so it's it's a great great community because a lot of really good chefs are also part of uh, this brand and um, and then obviously like I said before teaching for Mac3 and Modecor which are also very important brands in the gelato and pastry world mm -hmm. in different ways um, it's a, it's all great achievements because they're really important brands that have trusted you know their products and their machineries in me yeah. so, um, I think the most direct and easiest way is following me on Instagram the um, the link is at chef Sabrina Mancini and they can also follow us uh, on the uh, store uh, page which is at Nandi homemade and you'll see all, all the uh, projects and all the new products and everything that we do is always going to be